वन मॉर्निंग माई फ्रेंड हर्ष कॉल्स मी अप एंड सेस डू यू वॉन्ट टू पार्टिसिपेट इन वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट हैकेथॉन्स इन द वर्ल्ड एम्बिशियस एज आई वॉज आई सेट श्योर वाई नॉट आई हैवेंट इवन लुक दट द डिटेल्स बट जस्ट द थॉट ऑफ पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन द वर्ल्ड बिगेस्ट हैकेथॉन साउंड एट टू गुड टू बी ट्रू देन आई वेंट थ्रू द डिटेल्स इट वॉज अ हैकेथॉन अबाउट प्रिडिक्टिंग न्यू मिनरलाइजेशन पॉइंट्स इन द गॉलर रीजन ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड हेंस नेम the gollar challenge so we were given links to some of the publicly available data sets and were given a time of about 1 and a half months to come up with a pipeline to predict new mineralization points so we had never done anything like this before neither me nor harsh and the best part was we weren't even eligible we didn't know anything about geology we didn't know anything about mining and let alone predicting new mineralization points and fortunately we weren't even able to meet and work together due to the covid so here we were two high school students who didn't know anything about geology who didn't know anything about mining wanting to predict in a hackathon in which they were uh, they weren't even eligible wanted to predict new mineralization points in the gola region it all sounds very stupid actually why would we do that we didn't even had the tiniest of the qualifications required we only knew machine learning and had an experience of about 2 years of coding and we were aiming to compete in a hackathon which was open for everyone above the age of 18 years and had a prize pool of about 300000 dollars but we were stubborn kids and we wanted to try something new so we started working on it and we had a time of about one and a half months and the first thing was we wanted to get a way to get into this hackathon fortunately harsh elder brother agreed to help us in this and said he will submit our project on our behalf then we started working on our data sets we used google's service called google collab and stole its internet to download our massive data sets and stole its computation power using the same service and pre-processed everything we slowly deciphered the data sets learned about the features and pre-processed everything to make it understandable our data set mainly had two parts the first one was the geophysical factors of the gola region and the second one were the geochemical features of all the mines present there we just connected these two things and boom we had a solution we uh, we took random points from the gola region which did not had any uh, mines any existing mines took their physical factors and then predict and using them we predicted their geochemical features it now we had our idea we just needed to code it it took us mainly a week to build our models train them and refine them to get the best results possible we worked for 20 hours a day from 6 in the morning till 3 at night and when we took rest we left some of our models for training our laptops hated but anyways after a week we had three models which were smartly named using funny greek phases the first one was where art the mineral or where are you mineral bid me die named tell me your name and the third one was how big art thy how big are you as the name suggests the first model told whether the location was mineralized or not the second one told what type of mineral was present there and the third one told what was the quantity of the mineral present so our final prediction pipeline combined with all these three models had an accuracy of about 85% and surprisingly the economic value of our predictions stood out to be 100 billion dollars now let that sink in two high school students who didn't know anything about geology who didn't know anything about mining sitting at their homes just with the passion of programming and machine learning were able to hypothesize 100 billion dollar worth of mineral ore sitting at their homes thousands of miles away isn't that fascinating 
No other form of leverage can give you such power as with virtually no prerequisites. Even though we didn't win the hackathon, and uh, to be fair, we didn't have any prior uh, geological experience which made our things too good to be true, but irrespective of that, we had attained a very big milestone. With the increase in computation power and advancement in the field of data collection and AI, coding has a potential which is just limited by our imagination. From adding two numbers to complex analysis of data and images to make predictions, we can do anything with just a few lines of code. Let's take an example. Let's take an example of protein folding. So, predicting the uh, predicting the 3D structure of a protein from its amino acid sequence is one of the biggest biological challenges in the world. Proteins are the building blocks of cell, and they are responsible for everything that happens inside them. The 3D structure of a protein tells with what will be its function, but a major problem is the number of ways in which a protein can fold is astronomical. In 1969, American molecular biologist Cyrus Leventhal stated that it would take longer than the age of the known universe to predict all the possible configurations of protein. He stated that there are about 10 to the power 300 possible configurations of a typical protein. Just for perspective, the number of stars in our known universe is estimated to be around 10 to the power 21. So yeah, that's a lot of structures. So folks at Deep DeepMind, Google's AI firm, took this challenge, and in 2018, they, de uh, they deputed an uh, algorithm called AlphaFold. In November 2020, AlphaFold 2.0 outperformed 100 other teams in a protein prediction challenge uh, named CASP, or CASP short for Critical Analysis of Structure Prediction. And the predictions made by Alpha, uh, AlphaFold 2.0 were so strong that in the case of discrepancies, it was not possible to tell whether the, there was an error in the prediction or whether there was an error in the, uh, in the experimentation. The existence of alpha fold for protein folding, the existence of alpha zero for chess, the existence of GPT-3 for, uh, for generating human-like text, and the existence of many such machine learning models and engines give us a glimpse of all the possibilities we can achieve using code. Code is not only making new things, but coding has also transformed the earlier existing techniques and methods. The traditional data collection method, the traditional network of applications, and even the traditional financial system is being transformed using codes. One of the biggest example is the blockchain technology and cryptocurrency. The idea of decentralized data collection, the idea of a decentralized finance, the idea of a much more secure center and much more, uh, much more secure system of data storage and the idea of self-executing smart contracts for handling assets has compelled many people to invest millions of dollars into, uh, into, various, blockchain, into various blockchain projects and cryptocurrency. Today, we live in a world in which we can take an image of anything what we see and know everything about it. Today, we live in a world in which we can scan anything written on anywhere and know what it means. We can easily, these examples and many more, tell us how, code, how, the, how the products of code have become a vital part of our daily life. Anyone sitting at their homes, sitting with their laptop, can, make a mil, uh, can predict the location of million dollar assets, can make a million dollar cryptocurrency, can make an application which can detect diseases, can make an application which can connect people, can do anything what he wants, just he has to have the ability to code. Doesn't these ideas ignite a will to just take a laptop, sit with it, and start doing stuff? And if it does, then I would say just do it. Just learn how to code, and trust me, it's worth it. Thank you.